Though she was of royal blood as Hawaii's last reigning queen, Lili Uokalani loved the simple pleasures of gardening. Often at her home in Honolulu, she could be found tending the yard. She liked the smell and feel of earth and knew the names of all her plants. It was a satisfying ritual to her. You can still feel her quiet, strong presence here on the grounds and in the house. Every morning, Washington Place, her home, would be filled with the sound of chanting. The queen loved waking up this way, being an accomplished musician who loved hearing the history and legends of old Hawaii recited. Another ritual observed by her subjects was ho'okupu, or giving of gifts before the gods to show one's love, loyalty, and respect. Even at her death in 1917, such gifts, along with many tears, overflowed. That final ho'okupu was the Hawaiian people's way of showing their deep gratitude to a great queen, one they would never forget. Hello, I'm Jean Ariyoshi and Ikipa Mai. Welcome to Washington Place, which for the last 12 wonderful years, my husband, Governor George Ariyoshi, and my family have been blessed to call home. Washington Place was the home of Queen Liliuokalani, the sister of King Kalaakawa and the last ali'i to rule in Hawaii before it became a territory, then the 50th state of the United States of America. She was loved by her people as a compassionate monarch and today is widely regarded as one of the greatest composers of Hawaiian music in the 19th century. But beyond all this, the queen was truly a remarkable woman whose motto was Onipa'a, which means to stand firm. And Lydia Kapa'akea, Kamaka Eha Dominus, did just that. She first came to Washington Place in 1862, the young bride of John Owen Dominus. Her father-in-law, a ship's captain from Boston, had built this house in 1846, in the style of famed Mount Vernon, Washington Place was named after America's first president, George Washington. It's ironic indeed that history brought her here to Washington Place, for here she ascended to the throne on her brother's death, only to witness the overthrow of the Hawaiian monarchy by foreigners in 1893. Later, Queen Liliuokalani was held captive in her own home. In 1974, when my husband, George Ariyoshi, was elected the 14th governor of Hawaii, and when we moved here, 
were struck by the rich history of this house. And we imagine its beauty when the queen lived here. I somehow felt that the queen would be happy to know that the new caretakers of her home would respect its royal past as part of Hawaii's unique heritage. In fact, Washington Place is the only governor's residence in the nation that once belonged to a queen. Since 1975, we've celebrated September 2nd, Lili Uokalani's birthday, with a party here as a ho'okupu to her memory. Last year, I offered this small gift, a catalog of all the historical furnishings located in the lower level of Washington Place. It lists objects that belonged in Washington Place, some of which were brought back home. Several exhibits have been set up on a rotating basis. It was a joint labor of love that took well over four years and the help of hundreds of others to complete. The project began early in my husband's first term of office. We discovered that over so many administrations, the Queen's belongings had gotten scattered. Some had been sold to private collectors, while others got badly damaged over the years. The historical significance of individual objects was being lost in changing times. It made a sad statement about how Hawaii's past can easily be neglected in our rush toward the future. So it became our priority to try to document and preserve Queen Lili Uokalani's artifacts and to refurbish Washington Place in a manner befitting royalty. Hello. Mm. Hi, there. Hi, there. Hi. Our children grew up respecting their new home. Partly it was because they had the opportunity to meet members of royalty. Like the Queen of England or the Emperor of Japan. They could appreciate the fact that Hawaii was once a monarchy. Washington Place was indeed filled with historical importance that had to be preserved. So in 1975, renovation of all rooms began. Then in 1980, we began assembling a catalog of objects found at Washington Place to serve as a permanent record for Hawaii's future generations. So it is appropriate that over 250 young people filled the pages of our catalog with their efforts, making completion of the restoration project in 1986 possible. For over five years, painstaking detective work was done by hundreds of University of Hawaii students in conjunction with members of such groups as the Bishop Museum, Iolani Palace staff, and the Hui Hanai Auxiliary of the Queen Lili Uokalani Children's Center. Under the supervision of Dr. Mary Ellen Dijerlay, the students gathered as much information as they could on the furnishings. Since so little accurate information was listed in original inventories at Washington Place, the students basically started from scratch. They enlisted the help of local authorities, such as Dr. Roger Skolman, who helped identify the native woods used in the furniture. Their investigations took them everywhere, 
They wrote or phoned anyone, whether on the mainland or in Europe or Asia, who could help fill in the blanks. Over the years, besides giving us valuable information on the artifacts, some items have come home, like this blue chair that was given to us by Mr. Bill Alleman. I've got a wonderful story about this chair. You know, I was taking a city tour of Edinburgh, Scotland, and after the tour, two of us walked off and went, were sort of shopping, and this gentleman asked me, oh, where are you from? And I said I was from Hawaii, and he said, oh, I just donated Queen Lily Uwakalani's chair to Hawaii, and of course, I was so astounded. And I asked him who he donated it to, and he said to Mrs. Billum Walker. And I said, oh, do you know, Mr. Alleman, that your chair is coming home to Washington Place where I live? And so to think that halfway around the world, there must be, what, 220 million Americans, and two of us walk off from this bus, and it is Mr. Alleman who, is do who donated this chair, and of course, myself. All of the Chinese furniture was here when the Queen passed away in 1917. Uh, the Chinese furniture were upstairs, and we brought it downstairs and made this into a blue room. Uh, this piece, I, I couldn't even recognize it. It was so badly um, damaged, and it had ink stains. It was all white, and I didn't even know it was part of the Chinese furniture set until many years later. And so now it's been restored like all of the other furniture here at Washington Place. This coal calabash came home from Colorado. It was donated to us by Elizabeth Martin Cox. And the queen probably had stored her poi in it. And it's a beautiful piece. And we're so proud that it came home. This exquisite table belonged to Queen Lily Uokalani, and it was given to her by her husband, John Owen Dominus, in 1869. The base is made of koa, considered the royal wood of the ali'i, while the top is inlaid with about 500 triangles of different wood, including light and dark koas, milo, coconut, mango, kawila, kamani, hao, palm, kukui and sandalwood. Most of these are native to Hawaii. This Victorian type of furniture probably belonged to the Queen's mother-in-law, Mrs. Mary Dominus, because it was here at the time of the Queen's death in 1917. These portraits, Titupa and Karaokapa, young Hawaiian girl from Oahu and young Hawaiian boy, uh, were done in 1824 by Robert Dampierre. He was an artist who came on the HMS Blonde in 1824 when King Kamehameha II and his favorite wife, Queen Kamamalu, had gone to England. They caught the measles, unfortunately passed away in England, and it was the HMS Blonde that brought back our dead king and queen. And on that ship was Mr. Robert Dampierre, and he did what he saw, Titupa and Karaokapa. Now, in 1974 to 1978, during the Restoration era, era, we had all of the wallpaper, the draperies were replaced, the upholstering, and also the carpets. We had these draperies done by the by Fortuny in Italy, and they were specially made to match the wallpaper. And the carpets uh, were done by a Mr. Frank McCallion, who did the very famous dining room carpet in the White House in Washington, D.C. Certainly, over the years, Washington Place has been well cared for by other First Ladies who also wished to re-beautify the Queen's home, especially Mrs. Samuel King and Mrs. John A. Burns. The purple crown flower was known to be Lily Uokalani's favorite blossom. So Mrs. Burns commissioned Miali Kalama to do this quilt, featuring a crown flower motif. Ascending to the throne in 1891, Queen Lily Uokalani 
was filled with a strong sense of responsibility for the welfare of her Hawaiian subjects. But just two years later, the monarchy was overthrown by force. Lili Uokalani was held prisoner for eight months in the second floor of Iolani Palace and later placed under house arrest here at Washington Place. Since her husband had passed away by that time, it was her tremendous faith in God that sustained her through those trying years. Lili U Kalani had been reared as a devout Christian who played the organ at Kava'ihau Church and often led the choir there. This Book of Mormon was given to her by Abraham Fernandes on her birthday, September 2nd, 1907. Still, the Queen wrote in her autobiography, I have often said that it pleased the Almighty Ruler to take him away from me at precisely the time when I felt that I most needed his counsel and companionship. But Lili Uokalani did not become bitter, even though she had lost everything, her husband, her throne, and income. And like all Hawaiians, she was forced to surrender the sovereignty of the Hawaiian culture to the new American government. Throughout this period of great stress and sadness, her love for music comforted and strengthened her. Formerly schooled in music from the age of four, Lili'u had a natural talent for composing. Like others in her family, Kala'akawa, Likelike, and Leleo Hoku. By the time she died in 1917, she had written about 200 meles, writing some of her most beautiful ballads in these later years. She continued to do good and charitable works, remaining active within the community. To the Hawaiians, she always remained their queen. In this case is a revolving exhibit on loan from Hui Hanai, auxiliary to Queen Lili Uokalani's Children's Center. We have her guitar, two feather lays, a miniature kukui nut necklace, and a coconut calabash, and her pipe. Well, it was very fashionable in those days to smoke a pipe, and our queen was a very fashionable woman. And speaking of Hui Hanai, here is Miss Paul Mai Kavananakoa, one of the founders of Hui Hanai, and also directly related to our queen. Paul Mai. Well. well, it was an important project, Jeannie, and we were all very glad to have had a part in it. But I must confess that when you first came to us for help in 74 or 75, we thought, well, we'll just give her a, a few mementos and some lip service. Pretty soon she'll tire of the whole project, and then we'll be able to get back to our scrabble boards and bridge games in the back room of the children's center. We named the auxiliary Hui Hanai because it uh, has a double meaning. One which uh, refers to the work of the center, which is primarily mm -hmm. uh, an adoption agency. Yes. And uh, the other because it was the queen's pet name, which her intimates called her. You know, the queen was also hanaid to Bernice Powahi Bishop. Yes. Yeah. Well, as I understand it, Sybil Dean and Virginia Koch uh, were the queen's hanai grandchildren. And they were born here at Washington Place. Yes, and they recall how much the Queen loved children, even though she had none of her own. The Queen had a carriage that had a high seat uh, where the, next to the uh, uh, horseman, the person who drove the uh, carriage, and uh, then two seats in the back. And when my, they were company riding with the Queen and my mother and brother, uh, the, my brother was able to sit up with the, uh, the driver. And when they would hit a bump, he'd bounce back and land in the queen's lap and thought that was just <laughs> wonderful. 
One of the nicest little things that the, I have heard, not only from my uh, brother and, and my mother, is a queen, as you know, loved children. And she would uh, have a uh, uh, cat in the house all the time. And they'd play hide and go see. And one of the favorite places that my brother liked to hide, play hide, to hide was under the queen's skirts. <laughs> and who would dare try to find them? <laughs> Oh, that's a darling. The other is, too, that she will, uh, you'll hear many of the children that did come say that she always kept candy in her pocket, so they always knew that they had something to eat, sweet to eat. Well, of course, all Hawaiians love children and often refer to them as pua or blossoms. There was also a very keen concern for their physical survival as Hawaiians had virtually no immunity to foreign diseases that took such an enormous toll of uh, the population. So many died in the face of these grim statistics. Any child born at that time was so precious, and um, the survival of the child meant the survival of the race. And that's a big reason why she set up Queen Lily or Kalani Trust. Yes, in 1916, the queen was 78 and in failing health. She was anxious to put her affairs in order and particularly wished to leave her estate to the benefit of the Hawaiian people. After considering many alternatives, she decided to leave the bulk of it to orphaned Hawaiian children. Later, it was expanded to include destitute children. And having completed this last important task, in November of the following year, she quietly passed away at home. September 2nd, 1985 was a special time for us to share memories of a great woman and enjoy her wonderful meles. That evening, the governor and I recognized the contributions of Mrs. Clorinda Lucas and Miss Poomai Kavananakoa, who shared the Queen's concern for the children of Hawaii. Though Lily Kalani left us so many years ago, her strong spirit, symbolized by her motto, Oni Pa'a, stand firm, lives on to inspire us. Last year, Marlene Tsai invited the Queen's spirit back into her own living room at Washington Place by enacting scenes from Donald Berrigan's play, Hear Me, all oh, my people. So beautiful is my home, Aina Hau. It's a whole new world now, and everything's changing so fast. But still, the things most precious to us remain the same. The beauty of our homelands, wherever they may be. The joy we take in our loved ones and our children. So to you, my beloved people, whether you are Hawaiian by blood or by heart, remember always, ours is a great heritage with proud traditions that must be honored and preserved by careful teachings to our children. While well, together, we look ahead to progress. And I say, aloha, aloha. Aloha oi. Until we meet again.